Well, we done talking about Stellar Blade? Of course we're not. Stellar Blade, the protagonist in the game, happens to be a model or been featured after a model and everyone has lost their goddamn minds over it. Well, then everyone loses their minds. It's so insane right now and ridiculous that they now have to compare a new game coming out, Hades 2, to Stellar Blade and say, oh, this game is more diverse and they're hot as well. And it's like, no, they're not. Well, this one comes from the gamer. Hades 2 proves that characters can be both diverse and hot. Well, I gotta, I gotta say, Hades is a completely different art form. The, the art style, the style of the game is what in, entices us to want to play more of the game. And because it's a roguelite, you have replayability with it. You have everything else going for it. And the second rendition of the game, I, I haven't seen anything that is saying that the game is absolutely downright gaga like everyone has been over Stellar Blade. But where does this go? Right now, I there's Aphrodite, which is one of the gods or the goddess of love from Hades 1. I have her on a picture, as you can see, and you know, it's a different style altogether. It's this cell shaded style that I gotta say a lot of people generally don't take a very kind likeness when it comes to the cell shaded style of artwork, but it's a unique perspective. It's a unique way to look at games, but they're talking about how now the game is going to be so much more diverse and all the characters are hot. As much as I hate to admit it, I think a lot about Stellar Blade, not because she's hot, but due to the almost surreal fact of her shapely behind and Jago physics have somehow caused what feels like a culture-wide meltdown. Okay, seriously, how much are you clamoring over Stellar Blade? Stellar Blade is a return to a video game or a return to a normalization of the strong, independent woman that can sit there and take her own. It's a game that is appealing to the eyes. It's a game that's going to make things, make you think that the game is well done and very good. It really is a hot Dark Souls is what it looks like. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's the problem. But now everyone's gonna talk about how it, it you it's lacking diversity because she's hot. Women characters who look like more akin to real life people are often derided as ugly and the relatively common practice of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, consultation is pegged as the cause. No, it's more so than that. They take these character roles, they do these character roles, and then they sit there and cast the people into the role that just don't happen to fit the role in the first place. They shoehorn a diversity hire and tokenization of someone. That's the problem with it. It's not that diversity and inclusion is a bad thing, it's the way that they're coming about it. It's not being done naturally. They take these characters that are written and completely change them to suit the needs of someone's color of their skin. It's absolutely, it, it, it's affirmative action. Let's call it what it is. It's affirmative action. And you're putting someone up on a pillar that never earned it. Now, this gamer article, it, it, it's hurting my head to read. I've been turning this over in my head for the last while while scrolling through my Twitter feed in an absolutely everybody I follow is thirsting loudy over Hades 2 characters. So let's take a look at what their, what their examples here are. Let's take a moment to appreciate these absolute babes. Um, Nemesis here, is someone that's clad in, in armor that has no real definition other than the tight waist to make you think that that's a woman. Um, the definition of anything doesn't really scream that this is a hot babe. It just looks like it's Hades. It, it, it has the cell shaded idea of the art style. Then they have happy, Tedis, the, the god of the forge, the, a big flumpy old dude sitting in a chair, uh, he Hecate, 
Um, that's a dude. Uh, Melanoli, that, that she's so petite and lacking of figure. Uh, Dimitri, she's an old woman. Maybe, maybe, oh, maybe it's a guy just in a wig. This is hurting my head a lot. Hades is known for being a very gay game. Absolutely, who disputes this is choosing to turn a blind eye to the game's narrative. The game is a roguelite. You you just do replayability with the game. It's got decent combat with it, um, much like Dead Cells, which I thought was an amazing game, uh, which doesn't have an ounce of whatever they're talking about in here. In that game, in particular, you're you're a little Inobi or whatever, your little cell that's going around collecting items and unlocking the game. The replayability of a roguelike is a very different telling of it. But you're sitting there and calling the game gay. So Hades is just straight up gay. It, it, it's not meant for the common person to sit there and just lose themselves to a video game. It has to be gay. It has to be political. Diversity means more types of hot, not fewer. That queer bent isn't token at all. Inclusivity is at its core of Hades, and it follows through with the character design. Hades 2 picks up that torch and carries it even further. This game is... If this is what they're focusing on the game, then I don't want anything to do with this game. The, the, this type of article is absolutely disparaging and downright insulting to those that enjoy these types of games. Even if you're gay, you're LGBTQ, whatever, this is absolutely disparaging and they're just writing this for clicks. You know, I when it came down to Hades, I never saw it as a gay game. I never looked at it in that lens to try and say, oh, this game is completely gay and, and it, the gods are completely gay. It's a pantheon of uh, Greek style gods and it's a completely different style of take on a game that happened to work for a lot of people. The roguelike aspect with the replayability of it is more what people cared about that and not so much the hotness or the the absolute model that they've done for gaming like Stellar Blade and Stellar Blade has a different style to it altogether it's more going to be a souls like game than about the hotness but then they make these fantastical shots where she's going up or down in certain places where you get this absolutely amazing looking thumbnail and it makes the game absolutely downright impressive that they can do these things and make the game more fantasy and more sci-fi and then you can lose yourself to the game both games you can lose yourself to very easily hades you can spend hundreds of hours in there trying to unlock every little iconic thing that's in there where with stellar blade you're going to waste hundreds of hours trying to fight bosses while not being uh not being distracted by the protagonist in the game which i gotta say that type of distraction you know thumbs up to that thumbs up i i think they're going to do a hell of a bang up job but it's not a pout trying to put in something that apparently is hot they're saying that Hades 2 is going to be more hotness when it's flumpy nothingness. They're, they're making the characters look very generic in the first place. And then they're cell shading them. And it's like, I, I don't look at the game and I don't, ex don't look to experience the game for that. I don't look at Hades 2 being a different style of what someone else thinks that is hot. Because I gotta say, majority of people aren't looking at the game in that aspect. They're not looking at it in that lens. And nor do they want to make it that political figure. Stellar Blade? It's more like Metroid and a return to the what once was amazingly and great. I think that's where we're going with Stellar Blade. And you know what? Anyone that's just demoting Stellar Blade saying, oh, it's just because you're a horny, horny male and all this other stuff. No, it's not. It's something that looks great, that looks like it's going to play amazingly, and quite possibly will probably be one of the better games of 2024. I don't know where this is really going to lie. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow, and I will catch you next time.